Rick has been a member for, gosh, how long have you been around here? It's been long time. seven or eight years by now, isn't it? Wow. You were at U of M up in Flint. Yeah, six or seven, I guess. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, he's going to he's gonna tell us all about running an open source project. Keep, keep letting me come back. Yeah. Um, so I want to start out just to ask the huge, monstrous audience here, how many of you guys use open source software? All right, how many of you guys that use it have contributed a patch, landed documentation code or something to an open source project? About half of those that have used it. How many of you guys have your own open source project to like run and maintain or trying to build a community you're working on? Yeah, okay, a lot of wavy hands on that one. Okay. Um, so, uh, hello, I'm Rick. I'm the big bald guy. They let me come back once in a while and talk to you guys. Uh, I'm one of these lucky bastards. I get paid to write open source software by day. And then my wife lets me write open source software by night. Um, so I have a problem. <laughs> so, you know, hello, my name is Rick and I'm an open source developer. Um, and I can actually say that without pretending too much anymore. Um, this is my little GitHub profile from the last year. And so you figure out, you know, 1,400 and change commits over the last year. That averages a couple a day. I'm, I'm doing all right, you know, there's some holes. But, um, yeah, hecky, hecky, hecky. Now I cheat because part of this is work. Now that we've moved our work project to GitHub, I get bonus points. Um, and I have no shame uh, at all. So, when I started thinking about this talk, I really wanted to be like, okay, I'm, I wanted to theme it somehow. I wanted to be, you know, teach a lesson. And this sounds really sad, but I kept coming back to this idea of like, I should do like the seven deadly sins of running an open source project. Or like, you know, Dante's levels of hell of running an open source project. And they didn't quite map out, although there were a few that really, I was like, I can relate to this one. Um, definitely. The levels I had some really good, you know, if you're a really sucky, you know, project owner who doesn't respond to comments or ever do pull requests, you know, there's a level of hell for you kind of thing. They didn't work out. So what you have is this just me meandering around and I will tell you about my project Bookie. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Bookie is an open source, delicious, like, bookmark, management, replacement, web app. Um, I started it years ago because delicious had pissed me off. They got bought by Yahoo which meant that they stopped doing anything ever. And I got fed up with it. And I thought, clearly I alone can build something better than a big company with paid employees. I mean, after all, what do they do? So um, I do want to post this giant disclaimer. There are many paths in the open source world. Um, this is one. So by all means, I think there are some interesting lessons from both users of open source and people that would like to develop or even run a project. But this is what I got to work with, this is how, how I've lived my life over the last few years, right? So first, I think all projects, everyone says, open source is scratching your own itch. Like, no, 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 I get an itch. I go, eh, and I stop. <laughs> open source projects come about because of pain. I was angry at Delicious, you bastards, you're not actually giving me what I want in a product. Come on, man, there's cell phones, this mobile version, this is awful, I had like a WAP version of Delicious Bat, you know, it's just irritating how bad it was. <clears throat> and I was like, you know, they're bookmarks. Bookmarks are full of pages of content. Google lets me search the whole web. Why can't I search my bookmarks for, like, content and stuff? And, you know, hey, I like to own my own data, you know. At the time, right around when I started this, it was announced that Delicious is going to be sunsetted by Yahoo. Oh, crap. I've got years and years of bookmarks in that tool that's about to be sunsetted. How do I get it out? And where do I take it to? And how does this work? So, you know, it was soon to be shut down. And I don't know why else I started this. It made a lot of sense at the time. Looking back, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so, step one of an open source project. <laughs> you hacky, 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 hacky on something, and it works. And you have excitement. And I am an awesome developer. I have built a tool that does something that I set out for it to do. Woohoo! I'm the man! <laughs> right? So for me, this was, I went to a, my first PyCon, and uh, I was stay for the sprints, which I will say, if you ever go to a conference and they have sprints, stay for the sprints, because I got to hack with the developers yeah, of open sure. source tools that I used at work. And I submitted my first patches to open source projects like at the sprint. Oh. I sat down with the guy of Fabric, which is like an awesome Python automation uh, deployment tool kind of thing. And I actually like, my first thing was like fixing some of their test stuff, and it was kind of cool. Like here, I officially contributed open source, and the guy that wrote it was sitting next to me. Mm. So I'm like, hey, 
what is this? And he goes, oh, I know, because I wrote it, you know? So it's very, very cool. So I had sprints for four days, and at the end of the four days, I had a web app, which I could bookmark something, and I was awesome. And I was like, woohoo! And I thought, ha, 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 I have built a tool, and everyone will use it, and I will build a big customer base, and I will get paid to work on open source software, and this is the future of my career, is in this cool tool I built. Except, your next stage is pretty much disappointment. <laughs> Because you're like, all right, I built this tool. Why doesn't everyone use it? Like, where's my community, my user base, my people submitting patches? You know, all my friends are like, that's nice, Rick. Um, you hacked on a thing for a weekend. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, so basically what you find is everyone has a reason not to use your tool. And I, I'll admit it, I'm a user. And hello, you know, hello, I'm Rick, I'm a user, and I'm lazy as hell. Um, and so is all the other users out there. And if it doesn't do one thing, everyone had like their pet, well, your tool doesn't do X. So what they do, they don't patch X into your tool, they go find another tool that has X, you know? And so what you find is it's, it's, uh, it's not quite this whole like blooming, flowering garden of open source that you kind of dream in when you first start this little process. You kind of realize that, well, okay, um, back to myself. And so you find the answer to this problem is um, not to find people to help fix all your stuff, it's that you just have to write more code. A lot, 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 next year, more lot, more years, lot, lot, lot more code. <laughs> because you have to fix all these things that everyone wants if you want anyone to use your tool. And to be honest, um, oftentimes what the users want are things that I would also want. So we get to writing lots more code. So then you're like, woohoo, okay, I've written lots and lots of code, now where's my community? Like, come on. All right, let's get some patches in here. Let's get some users. And then you realize, no, they really are, are lazy. Um, and the fact that no one knows about you. Like, you have a little software project. And everyone, you know, it's not like Google pops up and says, hey, have you heard about this new cool open source thing, you know, at all. So um, you have to realize people will think that, well, this is just a hack. Like, you threw some code together over a weekend. I could do that. Now, I will say, in defense of the guy that throws code together over a weekend, for every one a guy that does that, there's a million that don't who go, well, I should write some code to do that, and then they never do. Um, but it really is, it's the truth, right? So what you have to realize is that if you're going to start an open source project, it needs to be about you. It, it can't be about, I see a need, I'm going to try to do a business thing, I want to be famous, whatever. Like, I think all the successful open source stuff begins with finding a guy who starts it, who just needs it, believes in it, wants it, and uses it. If the, if the developer doesn't use it, um, and it's not a huge community where others rely on it and now find it important, then you're just hacking on some code, right? Like, let's just be honest, right? So if, if you don't love it and you're not going to use it, then put the code up somewhere and forget about it, and just don't worry about it, because you're, you're heading for, like, you know, it's just not going to work out. So I kind of want to just, you know, this is a little bit repressing, but so you have to realize that no one else is going to do the work. No one else is going to write all the code that you, that's missing from your app. No one else is going to go out and publicize it and tell everyone how awesome it is. Um, let's see. No one else is going to, you know, plot out your future and your milestones and, and, and make you sit down and, and work it or whatever. It's all on you. This is just your pet thing. Um, and for me, it was this bookmark app. I have a pet project. It's my problem. Um, but what's been cool is that I like writing software. Uh, I care about bookmarks. And because of that, I've hacked on this one project for, come on, I'm on my fourth year of it now. Uh, and over time, eventually stuff kind of turns around. So you kind of hit where you've started to get a few people using your tool, and they come and what you find is you have like, a, I call it community 0.5. Like they're not really true community, it's like the, the hit and run. Um, and what they do is they come and they're like, hey, this is cool. Um, and they maybe submit a documentation update and then you never hear from them again. Or, hey, I got it installed, this is cool, and then you never hear from them again. And it's just kind of like, you know, you're starting to get this little bit of a wave building of people trying it out for a little bit, and then they disappear. But you know what? You have to be okay with that. Like, it's not, you know, that's just the way I think these things, at least in my experience, go, right? So I, when I started to get that, I'm like, okay, I, I'm doing something wrong. Um, I, I, I need to find a way to make things less painful for new contributors. So, um, I try to do a lot of things. I, I said, you know what, users don't want to do hard work, they don't want to install the software, so I, I pay every month for Amazon to host a version of it where you can go sign up to bmark.us, plug, 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 right, and go sign up and create an account and import all your bookmarks from whatever other tool you were using 
and use it. So, you know, there's users as far as users of the software, and you can do that for free, and, and it's valuable to me because it gives me interesting data points as far as people trying it out, spreading the word. And maybe someone cares enough to then submit a patch or get involved or whatnot. You never know. Right, so, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of work to do. Like, whenever someone would, you know, set up their first bookie instance, we made sure to give them an initial bookmark. Um, to, you know, make sure that they could import their bookmarks from something else and try it out, right? So, this is what my bookmarks look like on Delicious. Import. This is what they look like on, you know, Boogie. Like, how do I like them? How does it compare? How do the features, you know, you want to be able to give them the tools for this stuff. Um, you want to make it really easy to use. The first version of the thing, you had to go click add and paste in a bookmark, and you were like, yay, I can save a bookmark. Well, users like their Chrome extensions and Firefox extensions, and they like their scripts and whatever. Um, and sometimes this takes a lot of work. Uh, um, Matt's not here, but the Firefox extension would not exist if it wasn't for Matt. Matt wanted to use Firefox, and he got so annoyed that he started to write a Firefox extension. Doing Firefox extensions, I find writing them extremely painful. And every time I would start, like, all right, users, I need users. I want Firefox users to come use my tool because uh, they're open source hippies, and I have an open source tool for open source hippies. Like, you know, we must you know, make this work. And it was so painful I couldn't get over the hurdle. So Matt wrote an initial one that worked, and then I got involved to help get it up to speed and stuff. So, um, and the big one, there was one year where all I really did on Bookie, because um, I kept trying to have at, at uh, Pi Ohio and other conferences, I'd be like, hey, let's have a Bookie sprint. And I realized all we would ever get done, we would manage to get a couple people to have it installed on their system. And it was like, boy, that sprint was um, less than useful. Uh, so what you have, to, you have to realize is that your thing has to be so amazingly easy. Um, so I almost took a whole year and I used make and offline download caches and simplify the install process to where this is how you can get running with Bookie on your own instance. You clone it and you paste this in and when you're done you can run it. That took a year of my spare time. <laughs> you know? So on the one hand, I'm very, very proud of these lines. On the other hand, like, did I add a cool new feature? No. Like, did it help me at all? No. Like, you know, it was, it was educational to me. I learned a lot about build systems and building software and all this kind of stuff. But it's the kind of thing that if you want to try to grow a community,